Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Wow, what a difference a day makes. Stocks rebound after worst day of 2024 ahead of big tech earnings bonanza. U.S. stocks bounce back after investors received a wake-up call from the Fed on Wednesday. Meta surges ahead of earnings beat, announces first dividend. Amazon beats on earnings, stock pops, and Apple beats on earnings even as China sales slow. Now, this is a great article to kick off February with headline, ESMA monitoring hedge funds with 2,000% leverage from Hedgeweek. A group of hedge funds with exposure to mortgage bonds and average gross leverage in excess of 2,000% has attracted the attention of the European Securities and Markets Authority over concerns of potential market risk, according to a report by Bloomberg. When are regulators everywhere going to learn if you give these people an inch, they will take a yard? Well, guys, it's been a long time in coming, and we're just in the first inning on the commercial real estate meltdown. Headline, commercial property losses hammer banks on three continents. Investors have wondered when the pain from the downturn in commercial property would hit banks. The past 24 hours showed it is happening right now with lenders on three continents disclosing damage and two bank leaders resigning. Shares of the New York Community Bank Corp fell 11% Thursday, extending a steep slide that began a day earlier when the company disclosed troubles in its commercial property book and piled away millions of dollars for potential future losses. On Wednesday, it closed down 38%, its worst day on record. Now guys, follow the pain around the world. This section explains exactly what's going on. In Switzerland, the private bank Julius Baer said Chief Executive Philip Rickenbacker resigned after the company took a roughly $700 million provision on loans it said it may not get back from Austrian property landlord Signa Group. The group said it would shut down the unit that made the loans. What ties them together? Banks are big lenders to real estate owners and developers, putting them on the front line of the downturn in office building use and falling valuations. The risks are particularly acute for small and regional lenders, which have far higher chunks of their loan portfolios in commercial real estate than big banks do. The S&P Regional Banking ETF fell more than 3%, and the NASDAQ Regional Banking Index shed about 2%, while U.S. markets broadly were up. U.S. regional banks, including PNC, Citizens, and M&T Bank, all fell 3% or more. The pain in commercial real estate has been slow to unfold, while changes in office habits that have hollowed out downtowns are nearly four years old, and rates began rising two years ago, landlords have been cushioned by rent from tenants on long-term leases that have been gradually burning off. Also on Thursday, Deutsche Bank said it increased loss provisions in its U.S. commercial loan book nearly five-fold from 2022's fourth quarter to 123 million euros, equivalent to 133 million. In all, more than 2.2 trillion of U.S. commercial property loans are set to come due by 2027, according to the data tracker TREP. Many banks have given short extensions to loans that were due to expire over the past two years, putting the day of reckoning off to the future. Just five hours ago from CNN, banks are being rocked again as real estate losses mount. Nearly a year on from a banking crisis that led to the collapse of three U.S. regional lenders and the emergency takeover of Credit Suisse in Europe, a fresh chill is running through banks as far apart as New York, Tokyo, and Zurich. Common to all of them, mounting losses on lending to the troubled commercial property sector. 
A headline from one hour ago, Evergrande is harbinger of deepening crises in China. In the heart of China's bustling economy, a giant has stumbled. China Evergrande Group, once a behemoth in the real estate sector, finds itself at a crossroads with a liquidation order from a Hong Kong court. This isn't just a pivotal moment for Evergrande, but a siren call for all the Chinese economy at large. The ripple caused by Evergrande's predicament is far reaching. For decades, real estate has been the cornerstone of China's explosive economic growth, yet a perfect storm of burgeoning debts, dwindling sales, and evaporating consumer confidence has thrust the sector into disarray. Evergrande's woes, are but a symptom of a larger malaise that has seen over 50 Chinese property firms grappling with defaults since 2021. From Fox Business just hours ago, this doesn't sound like a soft landing. Layoffs surged 136% in January to second highest level on record. The pace of job cuts by U.S. employers accelerated at the start of 2024 a sign the labor market is starting to deteriorate in the face of ongoing inflation and high interest rates. That is according to a new report published by Challenger Gray and Christmas, which found that companies planned 82,300 job cuts in January, a substantial 136% increase from the previous month. However, that is down about 20% from the same time one year ago. It marked the second highest layoff total for the month of January in data going back to 2009. Guys, just this morning, I reported just the opposite, so you have my apologies. Uncle Frank was a victim of fake news. From the Cryptopolitan, Saudi Arabia refutes claims it joined BRICS. Ripple's XRP continues to sign deals. Hex Trust, a leading name in the industry, has announced its integration with the XRP Ledger. The integration marks a significant leap forward, harnessing the unique capabilities of the XRPL to offer an enhanced user experience and a suite of advanced services. Headline from three hours ago, Russian Central Bank Governor eyes crypto for foreign trades. While expressing opposition to the use of cryptocurrencies in domestic transactions, Nibelina revealed that Russia is open to exploring the application of digital currencies in cross-border payments. Nibelina emphasized that the Bank of Russia is actively exploring the integration of CBDCs and cryptocurrencies in cross-border transactions, especially with friendly nations. You see, guys, not everyone is down with the CBDCs, but everyone is down with the XRP. It's inexpensive, it's lightning fast, and it unlocks trap liquidity, something everyone needs right now. Now, normally Uncle Frank could give two shits what Benzinga thinks, but I did find this article interesting. Dogecoin setting up nice for its next run, says Doge Expert. 890,000 new Dogecoin addresses created in seven days. That seems extraordinary. Uh, Dogecoin is on a roll with new addresses created over the past seven days, surging as the Doge One Moon mission is on the horizon. I have no idea what that means. What happened? Data from Into the Block indicated more than 890,000 new Dogecoin addresses were created in the past seven days. The network activity also increased with the new adoption rate peaking at 86% as new users completed their first transactions. Earlier this week, it was revealed that Dogecoin's new addresses surged 1,100% from the previous week reaching a new all-time high of 247,240 new Doge addresses on January 29th. The SpaceX Doge 1 mission to the moon is scheduled for launch on February 3rd, 2024, and has the crypto community optimistic about its potential impact on Doge prices. Why it matters? The money transmitter license has already been approved in 19 states for X, bringing the company closer to deciding on the master plan for X payments. This also raised speculation that Dogecoin is soon going to be in play as a currency. Okay, 
This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency, but Uncle Frank bought 5,000 Doge for shits and giggles. And here's an interesting development in the AMC world. Shares available to lend in short have dropped significantly from over 5 million just a day ago to only 150,000 now. This could change by the bell, but the drop was large enough to report on. And it appears Eaton on X had an interesting question for our CEO that I would like an answer to. Hey, con man, Aaron. After AMC traded 1.25 billion shares on January 27, 2021, later that evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the AMC board held a special meeting via Zoom, and you recommended that AMC schedule a special stockholders meeting to amend its certificate of incorporation to authorize another 500 million shares, which is an extraordinary amount of shares. No documentation or financial analysis was provided during the meeting to explain the rationale behind the recommendation for 500 million shares. Any comments? I'd like to hear one too. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.